the most pressure publicly and the most scrutiny, the answer is going to be Russell Wilson. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind about it. I think it's going to be Russell. I mm. think everything is going to become – any sack is going to become a question of was that Russ or was that the offensive line. I think who should have the most pressure on him is Pete. Really? The most scrutiny is Pete. I do, yeah. Because he's made a switch at offensive coordinator, and which direction that means they're headed, I am very interested to see. Does this mean that we're going to see – a different offense is this going to be pete in some ways giving up control when a lot of people thought that he was reasserting control that's that's what i'm going that's what i think should be scrutinized most but i think the answer is that that russ is going to be most scrutinized i think russ should be most scrutinized i mean they gave him more toys and if he can't beat the same bleeping defense for the entirety of the end of the year and if he struggles the way that he did at times it's an indictment on him if he has now more this coming season and the same thing happens. Don't don't we look at that loss against the Rams in the playoffs, though, as not being his fault? Do we point at the offensive line instead? I do. I do. Yeah, I think that their protection in that game was bad. And I'm not going to say that's that's representative of the entire problem because it was that was a difficult matchup for them anyway. That had been something that was problematic, but in that game, I don't know how much of a chance Russ had. I don't disagree, and I think that's why, whether fair or unfair, I think John Schneider's under more scrutiny. He has the contract that extends the longest. The Jamal Adams gamble is going to weigh its most this year. They traded a first and third round pick. His other trades, too, Gabe Jackson and Carlos Dunlap. Of course, Dunlap, we think that he's going to work, but is Gabe Jackson going to work out? I, I don't think that's a certainty. And you had a small draft class, a draft class where some people are looking at taking Dwayne Eskridge instead of Creed Humphrey out of Oklahoma at center, and they're like, oh, why aren't they trying to fix the offensive line? And they weren't as aggressive as Kansas City this offseason when it came to addressing the offensive line. So I don't think it should be this way. I think it should be all on Russ. But I think that John Schneider is going to face the most scrutiny because I think he's the guy that looks, at least at this point in time right now, like he's going to be here the longest. What's, what's funny about that, Paul, is that he has the least in some ways to have worked with this past offseason. The scrutiny on him is kind of going to be on picks that were already made, right? It's going to be on the 2019 and the 2020 draft of do you continue to see growth from those players? Does somebody else make the, the leap that DK Metcalf made a year ago of going from being a promising player to being a bona fide star that... I don't disagree with you about the scrutiny there because ultimately his Schneider's job is to have restocked the cupboard. And you do have a lot that was staked on, on the selection of Jamal Adams on, on choosing. They put in three, three draft picks that you would figure should get you a player, right? That should a first two firsts and a third. It should get you three players. There it should get you yeah. three players that you expect to contribute. And those aren't lottery tickets. Those aren't like you expect to get get guys that are are big time contributors for your team. I th also think you know you 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 put Pete Carroll at the top of this one through three. I think he's at the bottom. And, and really, and, and and here's why. I I don't think people have a clue as far as what took place last year. And this assumption that he was holding the reins as tightly as he was. I honestly think it's crap. I, I really, this idea that he was pulling Russell Wilson in because he turned the football over over a couple of weeks, are we really looking at that and saying that that would be a bad idea if it was the case? But I, I, I don't think that he had firmly pulled the offense into this, oh, well, we can, we got to be as careful as we possibly can, conservative way that everyone is characterizing it. I think Brian Schottenheimer failed. And, and I feel like the new offensive coordinator and that Pete was willing to go away from it shows that he is actually willing to be hands-off on the offensive side of things. Is he willing to coach the kind of team he has as opposed to the kind of team he wants, though? Because I, I, I generally agree with you. I don't think Pete pulled the reins on the offense as much as... But is he willing, is he willing to coach a team that is whose strength is its offense to try and minimize the lesser unit, which is going to be this defense again. I, I suppose that's up for debate, but isn't it so strange that a person with his personality, we have this assumption that he is so stuck in his ways that he can't change. 
he seems like as all of of most of the coaches in the NFL, the one who would be most open to in, new ideas introduced to him. So why does he punt so much? The punting drives me nuts. Stop punting. That's a fair Stop point. Stop punting so I, much. In fact, that's a that's a that's a great counterpoint. And the, they are a kicking team. He has said that before. <laughs> Don't that, punt. Never punt. Well, the the if if you put the punting thing to the side though. <laughs> Oh, it's so hard. And the game I don't management. like the punting. I, I, I feel like at times. The challenges. Oh, the but, challenges. But here's the, here's the other thing with that, okay? Every coach in the NFL is bad at that. This is, these are my two <laughs> takes on the that, NFL. Come on. You've got to be better, though. Well, he's bad. That means there's, a, there's an opportunity to be better. But I, I, I find this part about the NFL so fascinating is that every single fan base that has hardcore fans assumes that they're general manager has no idea how to draft and that their head coach has no idea how to do game management. It is a problem that is rampant across the entirety of the league. I do think Pete gets a little bit of unfair scrutiny on that side of things as if he is the only one that goes about it that way.